This is the video you've been asking for. We're going to install PathPilot version 2 from scratch. We're going to install the intern motor control system from scratch. Brand spanking new intern mega. And we're going to put an industrial AC servo drive on it, configure it, wire it all up, watch it go. So now I'm holding down the uh, F2 key. So when it boots up, there we go. Okay, now we're in the BIOS. Now we have to go up here where it's that. Your BIOS may not look like this. This is a pretty fancy one from Intel. But somewhere on the line, it'll have a boot. It'll talk about booting the computer. So you boot that, and then here it says boot menu type. Now, again, this may be different on your computer, but this is what you're looking for, is um, how, how it's going to boot. Here's the boot priority, and it's going to do optical drives and removable disks and hard disk drives and network and so forth. So what we want to do is we want to tell it to do a US boot, to boot USB devices first. And it's going to get into this. Now, right now, it's booting off of that um, Tormach USB stick. And this is about as automatic as you can get. They, they did a really good job on it as it comes up. Got a beautiful install routine. Uh, you can start with a absolutely blank. I, I recommend a, um, what, what's called a uh, solid state disk SSD. And I recommend this highly. So you, you buy one of those if you want to put this on something from scratch and they're much faster and much more reliable than an old mechanical type of uh, with a spinning platen inside so here's where we, here's where we agree to uh, the, the license and click past that and then it says it tells you I put this disc in here do you want me to mess up with this disc yes we do so go ahead and now we get this nice screen and everything is already preset for you all you have to do is say start and away it goes and uh, I think it takes probably about 10 minutes Okay, we're back. It's done. It says uh, disk image successfully. It wants you to take the, um, what it's telling you is take the stick out of the, the USB stick out of the computer so it doesn't continue to boot off of that stick. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to allow it to reboot itself. You may want to take, you may want to pay attention to some of this um, text, but it's telling you what it's going to do to your hard drive. It's going to erase it. It's going to set up partitions and so forth. I highly recommend that you use a new uh, solid state disk drive for your CNC if you're going to go through this, and then don't put other stuff on it. Let it be CNC only because anything you, anything else that you put on is only potential problems, except for of course the intern software. And this, I agree with Tormach. You're going to pick what, whichever uh, machine that you actually have. Which I'm going to pick the 1100, because that's what it was used for the standard. And it, it might stop and say it's, it's, it's uh, putting more software into the Mesa card, and that's okay. You can just let it do that for now. And then it's, now it says it's done, and it wants you to power down the machine. I'm going to turn the power off. Have um, PathPilot going on. Once you have once PathPilot starts like this, then what you can do is you exit. And when you exit, you hold down the left shift, the left control, and the left alt keys all at the same time while it's shutting down. So I'm holding them down now, all three of those, and see what happens. It actually, it actually goes into the operating system. We have a little menu down here. So we're in the operating system now, and PathPilot has shut down. So now we have access to do what we need to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the menu, and we're going to pick Preferences. And, and, from, and, and this is all in the instructions, so, but I'm just going to go through it for you quickly. And um, then we have Startup Applications over here. We click that, and we want to add one. We want to add this. We're going to call it Menu Bar. And you can name it whatever you want, but you'll see in a minute why we're doing that. And then, to, and then for the command, we're going to say mate dash panel. And then we're just going to add that. And then we're going to find, say, well, somewhere in here is a path pilot. We're going to find that. Oh, there it is. There it is. So we're going to unclick that. So in other words, it will not automatically start up. All right. And then we're going to close that off. So now we've got that done. And if we want to, if we reboot the system now, see where it says quit, and we're going to say reboot. Now you don't have to do this; I'm just showing, demonstrating that it's going to start up now, and it's not going to, um, it's not going to start, it's not going to automatically start PathPilot. It's going to go to the operating system instead. 
And so now, since we've done that, how do we get PathPilot to run? Because now we have to understand some method of getting it to go because we've turned it off now, the automatic part. So we're going to cover that. Now, if it's this slow with a solid state drive, you can a solid state drive on a 10, 20 times faster than a regular, a typical old mechanical drive. So you really wait for quite a while. All right, since we've got this at this point, uh, I'm going to now switch over to uh, doing the um, record my desktop. Okay, we're now we're back at the operating system. The next thing we're going to do is we have to uh, get the software, which is on a website. We're just going to download it. Uh, if your CNC machine is not on the internet, you can just use a Windows computer, download it exactly the same way, put it on a USB stick, and stick it into your CNC computer. However you can get it in there, it doesn't really matter. But I'm, going to, I'm on the internet with this computer, so I'm going to go ahead and download it, and you'll do it exactly the same way no matter what computer you're on. So it's www.thecubestudio.com. Uh, let's see if I got that right. So far, so good. And then, now once you get past that first slash there, uh, the case becomes important. Upper and lower case matter because it's actually looking for a file name. So it's going to be in turn install. And then the underscore, which is right next to the zero key, and then the PP for path pilot, capitals, another another underscore, and then 2.0.0, and then yet another underscore, and then a capital R for revision 3 dot zip. If I type that right, miracle of miracles, there it comes. So it's downloaded now. I can just drag this out of the way a little bit, and then I can take that downloaded file and drag it right onto the desktop. Okay, it doesn't get better than that. It's even better than Windows. So once we have this, um, this is a zip file, so it's compressed and we need to uncompress it, or in Linux speak, we have to extract it. like It's a tooth, so we're going to extract this guy. It, uh, it's intern is the uh, password for right now. That'll change. And what it's going to do is it's going to extract these things into a folder, and there, are, there you have all of the intern software. The one that's of particular interest for installation purposes is this one that's called Intern Installation Tasks, and it's a PDF file. And I'm going to drag it onto the desktop just so it's handy. Double click on it, and here it is. It opens up. It's step by step by step. tells you exactly what to do every single step of the way and exactly what to type. So you just do the red stuff, and you're golden. So we'll get rid of that for the minute. And it's going to come in really handy for people like me that don't type with a hoot. So we'll do that in a second. So we have to install the um, intern software. So we have a file that's called intern install files. And that's a script file that will install all of these dozens and dozens and dozens of uh, files. It takes a while. So uh, make sure that you don't blink because here it goes. Boom. That's how long it takes to install the intern software is done. So if uh, the reason I leave this terminal open is that if there's errors, if something goes wrong, the errors will show up coming down here, marching on down, this didn't work, didn't get permission, you know, da, 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 note from my mother, typical Linux stuff. And uh, then, but this usually, so it's usually pretty easy to figure out what went wrong because the, the error messages are really uh, very telling. So we'll get rid of that now because everything went well. And the next thing we have to do is we have to load firmware onto the Mesa cards. So what in the world does that mean? The Mesa is M-E-S-A. That's the manufacturer of the board that's plugged into your computer bus that's, um, uh, that it comes with PathPilot. So uh, the Mesa cards are, are like in sets. There's, the, there's this card, and then it goes with that card, another card, and they have all these combinations. And one of the cards that goes with the board that um, Tormox supplies is a 7i76, and you don't have to remember that. It's just that it's a separate board that plugs into the board that you already have. And it's about, I don't know, it's about two inches by four inches, something like two and a half by four inches, something like that. And you'll need to mount that someplace, but we'll get into that a little bit later on. For now, we need to, we need to understand that these two boards are connected with a flat ribbon cable, and once they're plugged together, even though we humans can see that it's two boards, the computer sees it as if it's one board. It's one thing. So it needs new firmware so that it knows how to handle this extra stuff that's now hanging off of it. And uh, that that firmware, and firmware just means so software that's been put onto a chip instead of being on a diskette or a hard drive. And when you put firmware onto something, that's called flashing for, for reasons I have no idea why. But we have to do that. We have to flash the firmware onto this board set. 
And in order to do that, it's already all set up in here. We have to open a terminal, which is this little black screen down here. Click on that one time. And then, remember I said it's going to be really convenient to have this little installation doodad here? So we're going to drag down to the bottom. And remember, everything that you put in is in red. So here's the line in red that we have to type in. And that has to be exactly perfect right down to the last period where it won't work. So for somebody like me, this is a godsend. I just can get this thing right on top of the blue highlighting, right-click it, and say copy. And now I can dismiss that. I can find my terminal in here, right-click again, say paste, and there it is. Guaranteed perfect. So I can just hit return or enter. And now you see some messages that's telling you what it's doing. I'm erasing what's already on there. Now I'm putting the new stuff on, da-da-da. So the important thing here, the extremely important thing here, is to understand that what we just did was we put some firmware off in some little corner of that board, but it isn't act. The board's not actually running on it yet because the board is already running. You can't just slip new software or new firmware underneath of what's already running. So it just puts it off in a corner in like a storage area. So and and when the when the boards first start up, they go to that storage area, they collect up all that firmware, and they put it in the memory and they start running that. Just just like your computer runs software. If the board doesn't power down, then it won't power up. And it, when it powers up is when it's going to take that new software and start using it. If you don't do this, power up, power down, power up, power down. If you don't do that, your intern installation is not going to work. So this has to happen. So from this point on, uh, you know, I, I can't do this because I've already three times or so I've destroyed my, I'm recording this desktop. So I can't stop the computer because the, the, the recording will go south on me again. So you would click on menu and then you click on quit and then you shut down the machine. Now here's the important part to pay attention to. Computers, some of them, the motherboard is always on because you have this instant quick start and things, these kind of things. So they keep the motherboards like at the ready at all times, there's always power there. You have to guarantee that the power is gone, it's not on that bus, it is not on those cards. The only way to really do that is to turn the power off to the computer, which you can do with a switch on the power supply, or you can just unplug, them, leave it unplugged for 30 seconds, and plug it back in. That's going to guarantee that those boards go down, and then when they come back up again, they're going to be happy, going to have the right stuff on them, and everything is going to be peachy. So uh, I'm going to leave it at that. There's, a, uh, and there's, there's another segment here to go, and I'm going to make sure that I collect my recording for a change. Okay, so I got my recording off of here, and we've rebooted. And, of course, it came up to our operating system. No Pathpilot running. And um, if you want to have a, a pretty icon to click to make Pathpilot start running, there's instructions in here on exactly how to do that. However, if you do that, if you use that method, uh, then Pathpilot, when you exit Pathpilot, it will go all the way out to a power down your machine now, just like it does normally. However, in this particular case, I want to, I want this terminal to stay open after Pathpilot ends. And the reason is because I will lose my recording again. So, um, and also if something goes wrong, then you'll be able to see there's a lot of text that's going to show up on here and you can kind of track back in that to find out exactly what what happened what went wrong as it's extremely helpful so there'll be times when if anything doesn't work the way it's supposed to work and you want to send an email and say this is what happened then um i'll say well okay track it back until it says i'm done i'm unloading things this isn't working blah 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 and at that point Right above that is what is what will have caused the problem. So you'll see that in a second here. So to start uh, Pathpilot, we do this Linux stuff, a period, and a slash, and then operator, our friend underscore, and then login. Operator login is the standard um, way to start Pathpilot, that's Tormach's word, and away we go. So you saw a little bit of that text go flying by there. And uh, after we get that, I've seen all the pretty pictures. Okay, so here is Pathpilot, fired up, ready to rock. It's probably not going to let me reset because I don't have an actual Tormach mill hanging on this thing. So 
what it's unhappy about in this particular case is limit switch. It's waiting for the limit switches and it doesn't have any. So I turn those off. And now I can reset it. Now it's happy. But what in the heck happened? Where's the intern stuff? There's no intern any place. The reason that is is because I, I hid the intern stuff. I had to find a spot for it. And the easier, easiest spot for it that probably would not interfere with anybody was the, the injection molder, of which I just can't imagine there's that many injection molders out there that it's gonna, they're going to care about me taking up a little bit of that screen. So, but you have to click on that and enable it. And lo and behold, there's the intern. The intern stuff shows up because all that was here was a text. There was nothing, there was no controls in this area. It was just text telling you information about the injection motor, to, you know, melting points of plastic and really, you know, super critical stuff like that. So that's gone. It, the, the whole, the image, if you really needed to know the melting point of that particular kind of plastic, it's still on the disk. So you can still load it up and look at it and read it. But in the meantime, I stole all this spot. So, um, what I'm doing here is I'm just running these sliders around. And then uh, these, we're going to go over all this when I actually hook up the um, the, the uh, intern mega, which is going to be the next video. We're actually going to drag that guy. We're going to drag take a brand new intern mega out here, and we're going to put a motor on it. And we're going to get a brand new uh, Mitsubishi uh, servo, uh, servo drive. And we're going to configure that push all the buttons, set all the settings, to put all the wires, and we're going to get that thing fired up and prove that it really, really does work. So what happens here is, is the little blue uh, uh, RPM scale that comes up here. So if we say set speed, see it's 117 RPM, and that's 117 RPM. It's exact. So, all right, But however, we go past 500. Oh, this is 1,279. That's stopped on 500. Why is that? So we'll go through that when uh, when uh, we get to that part. But suffice it to say, right now that if I'm turning this, if I'm changing the directions, and our little RPM doodad is working there, that the, the controller is talking to uh, Path Pilot, it's getting information out of it. Everything's working the way it's supposed to. And on the next video, we're gonna have a lot more fun because now that's the software installation done, 100%, start to finish. And uh, it happens exactly like that. This doesn't take any longer. There's no smoke and mirrors. That's exactly how it works. And um, so I did that because a lot of people asked me to do it. And if a picture is worth a thousand words, I guess a video is worth a ten thousand words. And also to prove that it actually does work. But you have to pay attention to certain things like the uh, covered earlier, the on and off of those base of words. And it has to be done in a certain sequence. If you don't do it at the right time, you know, so this, and I don't make those rules. This, they're just imposed upon me by Tormach and by Mesa and so forth. So, and by Linux CNC. So we have to follow the rules. And if we don't, things don't work. And there's nothing that I can do about that. You it has to be done the right way, the certain way. But you can see now that it actually does work. So I think a video is a really, really good idea because people can follow along and, and, uh, and actually see what's going on. There's no interpretation to be done and so forth. So, uh, that's enough of my, my uh, lecturing, and I'm going to exit out of this, and I'm going to show you real quickly. See all this stuff that goes by? And I said that if, we, if, if something went wrong, we can actually scroll back up in here and go like, ah, right there. There's the problem. There wasn't a problem this time, but I mean, that's how we would find out what went wrong. And again, the, 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 the error messages are very telling. There's a lot of information there. It's usually pretty easy to find out what went wrong. Uh, so that's it for now for this. And then the next thing we're going to do is going to be a lot more fun. We're going to start playing with machines and spinning motors and stuff like that there. Okay. Bye-bye.